Roberts, who is a business leader from the United States and also leading a delegation from Transform Africa just uh, to speak to us about uh, businesses and how they've been impacted at this time by the coronavirus pandemic. Welcome to the program. Welcome on set, Doctor. Thank you, sir. Great to be with you. Indeed, uh, straight on to it, the World Trade Organization has noted this period as an unprecedented point in time where businesses have been uh, disrupted. At which point do we start now thinking of, uh, you know, coming back online and people recovering from uh, such a scourge? Yeah, well, I think the first step is realizing that we are in an economic war. Uh, we've fo been focused on the bio war for months now, uh, creating an economic war, creating culture wars, creating cyber wars, uh, that we have only been fighting one of the five or six wars that we're actually engaged in right now. And as you know, the very first step to winning any war is to know who your enemy is. And so I think uh, when we start looking at this economically, we have to be very intentional. And of course, that starts with empowering and enabling small businesses, SMEs, and in, in large enterprises, industries that have been uh, especially disaffected uh, and disengaged because of uh, COVID. And there are certainly specific measures that we can take to do that. Maybe uh, perhaps uh, for the benefit of our viewers as well, uh, speak about uh, Transform Africa and what do we hope to see from Transform Africa, especially now when statistics that were released by our central uh, bank uh, say that about 70% of small businesses will collapse at this time if uh, there are no mitigation measures? Sure, great question. So let me, let me take the first. On Transform Africa, uh, I, I started Transform Africa to address the social transformation that is part of the agendas of the African nations and also the economic transformation and then the political transformations that uh, all of Africa is seeking to make at this time, maybe by 2030 or 2050, depending on the, the country. And so Transform Africa, we have the water, the infrastructure, the roads, the SMEs, the agribusiness, the construction, uh, the ability to fund all of these projects from the very lowest to the, to the highest. We have empowerment programs. We have programs specifically for men to be men, teaching them and helping them to be the husbands, the fathers, and uh, you know, the workers and skilled uh, that they should be, and women, specific programs for them, for healthcare, for uh, education, and for helping them in their enterprises. And so we have specific programs and tracks for all of these and specific funding tracks as well to support them on an ongoing measure. So the African funding tour is part of uh, Transform Africa. We will be in six countries over the next 30 days. And we've actually funded 26 Kenyan companies over the last two days as part of this tour, the highest being a million dollars USD. And so we are, we are thrilled to be welcomed by the, the, all of these governments that, at such an unprecedented time. And of course, with three of the countries even still on lockdown, but they recognize that we are in an economic war and that uh, Transform Africa is a solution for that. And so to your question and remarks about uh, the uh, World Trade uh, Organization uh, and the statistics of 70%, uh, no, I think that's exactly accurate. And um, I actually view this as a, it, it's a, it's a big purge. It's a great purge. It purges companies, and there are many casualties as well. Uh, this, uh, th it, as sad as it is, because it breaks my heart every time I ever drove by a, a business and it said out of business or closed, it always broke my heart because I know what it's like starting at the very bottom with absolutely nothing, sleeping in a car for months and months. I know what it's like as an entrepreneur starting with nothing and then growing and growing and growing. And so to he see someone lose their dream or lose their life savings, it does grieve me, but I can tell you this, N uh, nine out of 10 businesses fail on a good day <laughs> without COVID. That's why you start 10 businesses, right? You don't stop, you don't quit, you don't use it as an excuse. In fact, it should build more character, more resiliency in you and you start again and you start better, you start smarter, you think about these things, you innovate and quite frankly, you have an unprecedented opportunity because this leveled the playing field. Large companies and small companies have to change the rules of the game and you get to help create those. Indeed, that is a very good news for business continuity for the small businesses, um, given that many of them usually suffer from challenges, even the most basic one, which is starting capital. Uh, you, where you sit is a unique uh, perspective. As you go around the continent and wherever you go to transform Africa, do you find that there is sufficient legislation and policy 
to guide your activities even at these times of unprecedented disruptions? Yes, I, no, I think there's a lot of work to be done uh, there. And that's one of the reasons that Transform Africa, I started the African Diplomatic Entrepreneur Summit at the request of the United Nations. And part of that was because we had to bring the political leaders together with private enterprise because there are gaps and there are divides. And we all live in our silos and our bubbles. And we have to break out of that and get the right voices of the right people in the room to be able to acknowledge, here's the red tape that's keeping me from being able to double or triple my sales, which impacts your ability to tax me and, and receive more revenue. And then on the other hand, we need entrepreneurs who are more engaged with following uh, uh, government protocol. And so that uh, when I see even many, many business un unregistered, even in Kenya, as a way of doing it, there's a lot of lost tax revenue. So I think it's a mutual respect and a mutual conversation and dialogue that we, are, we uniquely are bringing to the table with the African, uh, annual African Diplomatic Entrepreneur Summit. That's very interesting indeed. You did speak of the Kenyan uh, companies that you have impacted, and you mentioned that um, uh, you have also injected at least one million or as much as one million US dollars. Uh, perhaps you could speak to the continuity uh, for, uh, with which you will uh, con continue with, with these businesses. Will you inject and then give them capacity building along the way, or how will it happen uh, going down the line? Yes, great question. Uh, so it's not just a hit and run and you know give them money and leave. I think, uh, in fact, I started and told most of these enterprises, I spent over 30 hours with them in June on Zoom before I took the risk of flying internationally uh, to, a, to an airport that was locked down. I was fortunate to be here on opening day and one of the first American citizens being able to, to uh, greet to this soil. And so it's just a, a blessing to be here, and I thank God for that. But I told them prior that most of them do not need money to grow. Most of the businesses here did not need money to grow. What they needed was the right strategies and the partnerships, the right alliances. They needed the fruit exporters, the international relationships, the platforms. Many of them were seeking hundreds of thousands of dollars USD investment to build software platforms that we already have, and some of which that cost $30 per month and they can use. Uh, and so in st it was shifting a lot of the mindsets. Uh, we probably had six companies, uh, agribusinesses, that each wanted to create their own processing plant and you know wanted uh, a million dollars or two million for that or more. And, and so obviously that is silly to create, for every enterprise to create their own plant. And so what we did are, is we're working on having one plant that all of our fruit exporters, and uh, whether it's uh, mulberry uh, trees or avocados, a lot of avocado businesses or fruit and, 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 uh, and bananas and so forth. So we'll have a central processing plant uh, for all of them to be able to use. And uh, you know that's the kind of impact that we want to have. Through Timeless, uh, uh, our, one of our partners here in Africa, they have uh, a legal and business analyst that work with all of the enterprises to, uh, with me to help get them ready to, for funding and, and then uh, st they stay with them throughout the year uh, as uh, their consultants and advisors at no additional charge uh, just to be a part of the process, make sure they're successful. Uh, in Kenya, for example, we have had uh, disruptions majorly in the horticultural sector and the tourism sector. Businesses in that space have really suffered a lot, even in the, in the transport side, especially the airline side. Um, bringing to the question, um, which, which sector in particular have you got yourself involved in and uh, where does it go from here? Which other sectors are you bringing under your wing going forward? That's a, yes. Uh, th the answer is there is no specific sector. I, we're helping people from all, all walks of life in all sectors. Uh, but I will tell you the two areas that I have concentrated the most, and that is in helping governments uh, with uh, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence defense systems. The three greatest advancements in human warfare uh, was ammunition, uh, number one, nuclear, number two. The third is artificial general intelligence. I was privileged last night to spend uh, about an hour and we made part of our conversation public uh, with the chairman of artificial intelligence uh, formerly with, at the Pentagon. And so we were discussing the global implications of artificial intelligence and you know, many, uh, Elon and, and Musk and Bill Gates being a couple, you know, have grave concerns over a, uh, humanity reaching AGI and whoever reaches that first, uh, Russia's president Vladimir Putin has said, we'll rule the world. Uh, we do not disagree with that. 
So we are in an aggressive, uh, uh, it's an aggressive race to who achieves that first. So I'm working with several even of the African governments while I'm here on some of the, those uh, uh, you know, national security initiatives. My goodness, uh, artificial intelligence, another interesting topic that we can go on and talk about for hours and hours. But uh, going forward, people, uh, everyone you ask, when you ask them about post-COVID, they are not sure, they are not certain. Uh, so um, what do you see in, in coming months, uh, even as um, you know, countries look to angle themselves to persevere through this time? Because of course, the vaccine is not yet out. Uh, how will we go forward? Well, I think the first step in going forward is to go forth courageously. Uh, I think fear, fear causes the body to freeze. It causes your brain to shut down and you will not think clearly and you will not innovate and thus you will make bad policies if you are on government or you will make bad business decisions if you're in the private sector. So you go forth courageously. Unfortunately, people like a do this, do this, do that. They don't like the answers where it says you have to be something different. But I can tell you that success always comes from being, not doing. That we like the action because it's about us. It's selfish, it's prideful, it's arrogant, it's ego. We did it, we made it happen, we overcame. And while there is a, a, a unifying effect, I hope that the unifying effect from this is that we love one another more, we care about one another more, we're kinder to people, uh, we give people a little bit more grace. And I think if we approach business and life with a little bit more temperance, uh, then I, I think we will be able to think clear. I promise the market will receive you better as a business owner, a business executive. Uh, the market will receive you better if you have that kind of a spirit. Uh, the dictatorships are not uh, that exciting to people. It's not as welcomed. We, we like uh, it to be seasoned with grace. And I think how we speak to people is critical. And, but you be very wise. You be very discerning. I think that uh, this private sector and public sector, we don't have a job that is called discerners. But quite frankly, that's the difference between you uh, uh, succeeding or going bankrupt. Uh, it is the ability to discern, the ability to perceive, the ability to observe and then to make uh, strategic moves based on that. How do you make moves in an unpredictable future, but to a predictable outcome? And that is the work that we do uh, at Transform Africa uh, with both governments and enterprises. Indeed, that is a valuable information. But finally, um, what, what would be the rallying call, even especially to perhaps partners that you're looking into, what's the rallying call to like-minded uh, special purpose vehicles like yours at this time? Well, the, the clarion call is that uh, those who are seeking to move forward will be attracted to, to Transform Africa and what we're doing here. And then those that uh, prefer to complain about COVID, those who just, uh, uh, you talk about how bad it is or how, what happened, uh, that they will not be attracted because we are very forward looking we, we, we take adversity and believe that adversity is the very thing we need to fly higher. Uh, a bird can, uh, the higher a bird achieve, uh, flies, he has to have more resistance. The only way a plane gets off the ground is by going against the wind. You have to, you need the resistance in order to grow. And, uh, and, and so the more people like-minded that we are able to help see, you do not have to be a victim. You can be a victor. You are more than conquerors and uh, there's a way to do it. And uh, we hope to help each one that desires a better future for themselves and their family to join us. I mean, this is unprecedented what we are doing and we are making history with both uh, uh, Transform Africa, the African funding tour. This part has never been done, especially a six country tour where they all came together to support these efforts. Over 700 African enterprises will be benefited 25 days from now. So that's been a great honor. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. We have been speaking to Dr. Roland Roberts, who is a business leader from the United States of America and also heading Transform Africa. We appreciate you being with us here today. My pleasure. Yeah, of course, we were just talking about the business climate and the uh, call and uh, impact uh, of COVID-19 on businesses. And what we gather from this conversation as well is that there is need for more wealth maximization rather than a profit maximization on the side of the people who can afford to weather the storm. And now we move into sports now where Harambe Stars midfielder Johanna Omolo has assigned a one season deal with a Belgium club, Cell Bruges. Cell Bruges 
the 31-year-old Kenyan international who joined the club in 2017 is entering his uh, fourth football year at the club. Omolo, who turned 31 last week, has already played uh, for Sehel uh, 59 times uh, since uh, 2017 when he joined the club. Omolo, who is capped 19 uh, times uh, for the national team, Harambe Stars, featured in uh, 12 matches for the club in the 2019-2020 campaign. He has played for uh, several clubs in Kenya, Belgium and Luxembourg, among them uh, Costas, Visevola, Esch, Bistroch and Lomen United and received his first call-up to Harambe Stars in September 2010, making his debut for the country in 2011. Elsewhere, Manchester United came from behind to beat Austrian side Lask 2-1 at Old Trafford advancing to the quarterfinals of the Europa League 7-1 on aggregate. Anthony Martial uh, came off the bench to score the winner four minutes uh, from time, collecting Johan Mata's uh, precise uh, through ball before finishing off his uh, 23rd goal of the season uh, from uh, 10 yards. Earlier, Mata also provided the assist for Jess Lingard uh, to score for the second consecutive uh, game. In other results, uh, goals from Romelu Lukaku and Christian Eriksen. Uh, so Inter Milan beat uh, Getafe to reach 